and say good morning. My name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil. Um, I also run a consultancy called the Outside Digital Art and Design. I uh, have been doing that for 20 something years. Um, and this is Getting Started Rhino for Mac. And what we're going to talk about today is this little kind of retro radio thing. And it's a fairly simple shape, but there's kind of a few interesting little bits on it that I want to get into. And I want to talk about how to design in 3D, not just not just build something, right? We can build anything we want and that's that's fine. But I want to talk about how to actually take something that is really loose, like this sketch, very undefined. There's a lot of questions here. Um, and and this basically gives me nothing more than an exterior envelope. It doesn't show any form. It doesn't show any of the fillets. It doesn't show any of the transitions. It doesn't, it doesn't show a side view or top view, anything like that. So there's a lot of questions to answer here, right? So what I want to try to show is the flexibility of Rhino to actually, as a design tool, um, and along the way, obviously, we're going to do some modeling as well. So, um, so as with as with any webinar or any model actually any model is i basically start with a sketch and i do that by by um, running the picture command first that's the first command and that allows me to drop this this image into the scene and then um, i always go and throw these onto a layer so that i can get the image where i want it I'm just going to move that to here and then the next thing I'm going to do is go to the perspective view. And I'm actually going to slide this a little bit out of the modeling window. And everybody always asks me why I do that. And the reason I do that is if I start modeling, and especially if I'm modeling in shaded view, it becomes really apparent. You can see that the image gets cut in half by the model, and I can't see what's going on. So. I always take this and slide it back here so that I can see the image, I can see the model, and if I go to the front view, it's obviously lined up and I can do what I need to do. Now, the other thing I need to do is I need to drop the contrast on this because if I were to draw over a darker part of the image, it's very difficult to see my line work. So I'm going to pick this, I'm going to go to the materials. If your materials are not shown up here in this little gear is the ability to be able to switch from the inspectors to the to the properties a little spinning beach ball here so up here show properties panel if i show that it's going to change it does have materials here as well or if i show the inspector panels it has a different set of materials so it looks like the it looks like the materials is available on both sides there so um, i'm going to roll the transparency up a little bit too much just so that now you can see now I can see my line work, right? All righty, let's go back to the layers palette here. And I'm gonna go ahead and lock this image now so that it's stuck. Now, for students, if you're using a Mac, the very first thing you should do when starting a model is file, save. That's gonna bring up this dialog and you'll see that it is no, it is listed as untitled right now you want to save this first because that is the switch that allows the mac saving mechanism to start kicking in okay if you don't do that and you finish your model and it says do you want to save or delete and you hit the delete button and then you call me on tech and say my model disappeared i thought mac saved stuff automatically and i say did you save it to start with and you say no we're both going to have this awkward pause while I try to figure out politely how to tell you that your model is gone. All right. So I like to say that faith and religion may save your soul, but only control S is going to save your data. Um, do with that what you will. All right. So let's let's get rolling here and and take a look at this. Now, I've got a very basic shape here, right? It's kind of a a rounded cube if we're gonna if we're gonna get really simple so let's lay it out as such and I'm actually gonna start by um, I'm gonna start by just doing a simple rectangle and what I'm probably gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wing this and I'm gonna draw basically about this shape right we're gonna go to about here and what I need to do is I need to kind of get this centered 
over the origin. So I'm actually going to move this using my O snap and I'm going to move this to zero. That way I know my geometry is centered. And in this case, the, the image is a little off center. So I'm actually going to unlock, grab this, and I'm going to move this over using snappy. And I'm going to kind of center that over the image. And if your gumball doesn't snap, by the way, go here and change this from smooth dragging to snappy dragging. And that will allow your gumball to respect those snaps, which I find is super useful. All right. So let's go ahead and lock this up again so that we can't access that. And then I'm going to do a little bit of editing here just to get a little closer to my size. And I'm going to slide up a little bit to there. All right. So I've got the basic form of this thing. And, and the, except for the top, right? The top is, has this arc to it. So let's take this and explode it. And then I'm going to change degree. And I'm going to change degree from three, which only gives me two control points on each curve, right? Because they're all straight lines. And I'm going to change this to three. Now, when I do that and I turn the points on, you'll notice that I have four points on each curve that are all nice and evenly distributed. What that does is that allows me to grab these two points and pull them down and start to approximate my shape. Right? But it keeps my curves nice and organized. I'm not worrying about the fillets right now because I'm going to go ahead and build this as a cube first. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my transitions later because I don't know what my actual form looks like. So I'm going to join this back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extrude this just using gumball. And I'm going to guess and say, how wide does this thing need to be? Right? Something like that. And then I'm going to run the cap command to turn it into a box, right? Or a piece of bread or whatever we want to do. Now, from a design point of view, we want to start looking at this and say, okay, now if I go to wireframe, my I feel good about this top form. The sides are pretty flat. The bottom's pretty flat. Do I like that? Do I like this flat? You know, does this does this straightness is that fit into the theme? And it kind of fits with the sketch. But the thing that I want to point out, especially if you're the one that did the sketch, right? Don't don't marry yourself to the sketch. Marry yourself to the model. Make your decisions in 3D. Decide what the thing looks like in 3D because this is real and this is not. Okay, the sketch is not real. The sketch is 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 a is a is an inference of your design, right? It's a it's a suggestion of your design. This is what's actually going to come out of the printer or the CNC. Um, the degree command is called change degree. I have a hotkey set up for it for that's uh, that's uh, an alias for it. So you might see me um, hit CD enter. That's the alias I have set up for it. I'm also working at home today, so you may hear my dog or my family or <laughs> anything else in the background. We'll try and edit that out in the in the final video. So, um, so so one of the things that I I look at right is in the front view or this the right hand view of this thing. Is it, is it the front and the back are parallel? And, and that's fine. Do I, do I like that? Or would I be happier if this thing had a little bit of, you know, was a little bit more stable at the bottom? And I can do that by shift command dragging a corner on this thing and pulling it, right? And I can do a sub object selection and, and move. I can also do shift command drag over an entire edge and then I can do some like something like the shear command and I can start here and I can shear this entire face like that which keeps everything nice and lined up which is kind of a cool command I just learned about I've been doing Rhino for 20 years and I just learned that the other day so I figure I'm going to pass that along um, and so this gives this thing a little bit more weight at the bottom so if we go to our perspective view we can say, okay, well, that feels a little bit like it's going to be less tippy, right? And then, and then I I kind of like having a little bit of extra weight 
on the back of that thing. So I think I'm going to roll with that and say that it does like that, right? Now, the next thing I need to decide is do I like these, these sides dead parallel or do I want this thing to have just a little bit of, right? We added, we added weight down here. Does it, does the whole thing need to have a little bit of weight? Almost like, almost like it's squishing or gravity is affecting it. And if that's the case, then what we're going to do is explode this entire thing and turn on points for the entire model. And you can see that I have points, but not really enough to work with. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with my curves. And I'm going to change degree. Can only change curves or surfaces, but not both. All right, so let's sell our, let's select our curves and hide them. And then sell serve. And we'll change degree on those. There we go. So let's do degree three and degree three. And you'll see that we get now four points on each surface, which is super useful because we can do things like this. And I can scale these points and give this thing a little bit of weight, right? Just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. And that to me feels better than that. That almost looks to me like a vertical line almost looks like this thing is kind of sucking in like that. Whereas if I add just a little tiny bit, that just almost feels a little better to me, right? I don't know about you, but you want to do something different? Do your own webinar. <laughs> all right. So let's let's go ahead and let's join all this back up again. And I want to double check periodically. I'm going to go through this several times, right? I'm going to go through and I'm going to check my edges. And I want to show my edges, edge tools, show edges. And it looks like we do have some naked edges here, right? So this thing peeled apart a little bit on us, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually I want to I want to see where those naked edges were. There we go. Come on, give it to me. All right, it's going to make me go find it. All right, so we can see all of the pink is something that's not completely joined. So I'm going to shift control click the front and the back, and I'm going to delete them. And then I'm just going to go put them right back in with a four sided surface. Right here. One, two, three, four. Join it up. And now we don't have any naked edges, right? We can we can verify that down here because it says three surfaces or poly surface joined into one closed poly surface. That means everything's closed. We don't have any pink. That means we have a solid chunk. And you're going to hear me refer to that a bunch of times along the way. And the fact that I like to work in chunks, even if the model has a bunch of different pieces, I try to have each one of those pieces be watertight along the way. And then that way I can kind of keep a, keep control of this thing as I'm going so that if I try to print it later or send it to a CNC or data transfer or something like that, I know that I don't have a huge project at the end to try and, you know, get the thing back to being watertight. So let's, let's take a look at the fillets on this thing and let's, let's start picking at those. So we have a transition here. And we have a transition at the bottom and it's it's kind of like it's almost like a blend as opposed to a as opposed to a fillet so let's do that as a blend and if we go here and we say blend edges i'm going to pick these two and we'll do these two separately and let's go to the front view and 
my preview on this thing is white, which is not super helpful, but let's set all. Looks like it's about 1.12. So let's do set all. Do 1.125. And let's roll it. And that looks like that landed pretty close to what we wanted it to do, which I think is, is pretty fortunate. So, And this one looks like it might be close. So let's go ahead and just run with the same values. And it looks like that was a little too much. So let's run it again with a lower value. Let's do like point. I'm going to do that. That still looks a little bit big to me, so I'm going to do that again, sneak up on it. I'm going to do my previous edge selection, and let's do, let's try bracketing a bit and do 0.75. That feels better to me. I think that's a little closer. So shade it, take a look at it. I think we're in pretty good shape. Now, a lot of these details, you, you have to kind of plan when you're going to do transitions and stuff like that, right? And, and I think it made sense to do these edge transitions because so much of the form depends on that. The other thing that we need to decide is when are we going to roll the front and the back edges? And I think actually now is a good time because this grill if you look at the way it's designed, it's obviously going to get into this filleted area or this this blended area. So I think we need to we need to get into that. Now, what did we use for the value down here? It was like 0.75, right? So that means that when we do the blend on the front, we cannot do more than 0.75. If we did 0.8, then um, then this fillet would fail because it's going to roll, this edge is going to roll bigger than this edge is going to allow it to go. Um, is there a reason you're not using the mirror command? Um, not particularly, actually, now that you mention it. Um, this model is fairly, since I'm building it over the center line, it's easy enough to, you know, I could build one half and then flip it. And I may do that later, but the model is asymmetrical since it has this detail over here. I mean, the form, the base, the base body is symmetrical, but the rest of it is not. Um, I will use probably use the mirror command when I get up into the handles and stuff like that. But this thing is easy enough to manage right now that I think I can I think I can do it without it. All right, so let's go ahead and do another blend edge, knowing that 0 0.75 was our radius. I'm going to actually change this to 0.7 now so that we are under the smallest. You have to go from big to small, biggest radius to smallest radius. You can't go the other way around and you can't, you can't start small. Um, totally arbitrary how I'm determining the, the values for blend edge. I'm, I'm completely making it up and I'm guessing. And if it works, it works. And if not, I go back and redo it. So that one actually completed. It was really close. See this? See that? I don't like that. So I'm actually going to undo it. This is the this is the design part of it, right? This is the iteration and and stuff like that. So let's do uh, let's do 0.5 and let's chain the edges and let's preview it and see if we like it. I like that a lot better. So I'm going to accept that. I'm going to run again and I'm going to blend the back. Ideally, we get a similarly good result, and we do. If not, we just change it. It's fine. And that is the main form of our model, right? Now, the one thing that we didn't talk about is the front of this thing is dead flat. Or is it? Is it dead flat? Yeah, it's dead flat. And, and so the, the, we, have to, the, we, we would have had to have decided before we did this billeting if we wanted this front to be dead flat. And in this case, 
you know, I'd have to make a decision. Am I being a super lazy designer and I'm not going to, I'm not going to change that? Or am I going to be a not lazy designer and go back and fix it if that's what I wanted? And if it was what I wanted, then that's fine. I would just keep going. If it wasn't, I would have to back up. I would probably back up all the way past where we did these back till, till it had the, the, you know, the square edges again. Mm -hmm. I think in this case, I'm going to be lazy and just accept this as, um, as flat right now. But if I, if I decided at a later date that I wanted this front to actually have some crown on it, um, I think I would go all the way back to the beginning where I had the original square edges, add that crown to it with the original basic surfaces, as opposed to trying to come back and do this at a later date. Now, I could come back and do it at a later date if it was if it was really critical for me to do that, but it, it's a bigger workaround in order for me to be able to do that. Um, I'd have to go back and actually build this blend by hand at a later date, which is fine. You could do that, but let's uh, let's keep things simple for right now. All right, so we've got our basic shape. We can now decide: Are we going to get into the buttons and rough this whole thing out? Are we going to get into the handle? Are we going to get into the detailing? And I think I think we'd probably let's go ahead and and get into the detailing on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with from this this midpoint here, right? And I'm going to come up and snap and go out in this direction and start drawing my buttons. Only three points to make a corner, right? We don't make 25 points to make a corner. And you can see the how you can see how scruffy my sketch was, how my that line was kind of all over the place. <clears throat> mirror command. You thought I wasn't listening, but I am. Here's the mirror command. I'm gonna join this up. And then I'm gonna extrude this back. This may be premature, but I think I'm going to sneak up on it since this is this is fairly flat. Since we decided the front was flat, we don't have to have any any uh, curvature on this. I'm going to use the isolate command. This is a new command for six, which is really cool. And then I'm going to come in here and just loft these two bottoms together. And then I'm going to run the cap command. And with very 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 little modeling right we've we've managed to build this piece now i like to refer to it as efficiency between you and me it's probably just because i'm super lazy i'm super motivated to try and find the easiest way to get this stuff done and and you know this this gumball extrude the gumball stuff that you can do um with the extruders is is super efficient because it allows you to get a big chunk a lot of heavy lifting of the modeling done early and then you can use some other tools to fill it in. So let's go and knock the edges off of this. We're going to do that with blend edge again. And 0.5, I can tell you right now, is going to be too big. So I'm going to preview it, and you can see that it's going to be a nightmare. So let's do set all, and let's do this to like 0.15. That's a much better result. And where you want to look, you want to look into these corners. You want to make sure that it's not self-intersecting. You want to make sure that you don't have a ton of verts stacked up on top of each other. You don't want to get any ugliness in that. So I'm going to go ahead and let that roll. In fact, that may even be a little bit fat. Let's do a little smaller. And because I'm in preview mode here, I can do this. I can iterate a little bit. So I like that a little better, a little, a little lighter fill it on that. So let's let that roll. Let's bring everything back. And those will be our preview buttons on the top. Now we need to decide like we need to break them up. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to isolate again. We're all good at isolation these days, right? <clears throat> and I need to break this up into four even pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy this curve and I'm going to grab this. I'm going to dupe an edge. And then I'm going to use the divide command. And I'm going to divide this into four segments. And that is going to give me one, two, three, four. Well, it's four segments. So one, two, three, four. So there's, there's the locations for my four buttons. 
So actually, I've got five buttons here, so I need to divide that by five. Derp. Let's try that again. You guys are like, oh, you really don't practice these before. No, I told you, I don't practice these before. I make this up. I did this sketch like seven minutes before this thing started. You guys are like, oh, okay, we get it now. All right, so I'm going to snap this to here, and this is going to this is going to be my gap. I'm just drawing what my gap is going to be, and then I'm going to use the copy command, and I'm going to copy from here, and I'm just going to go boop. That's me making the boop. Rhino doesn't make the boop. I wish Rhino made the boop, because it's fun. I fill in sounds that Rhino should have. And then I'm going to just extrude those out and make a little cutter block. And if we do that shaded view, you can see what's going on. All right. Now these are open. See so yeah, how you can see through those? So I'm going to just drag, select, and cap. And then we're going to just do a Boolean difference using all these guys. I'm going to delete the input. And there's our four buttons. Now, we should probably knock the corners off of this. So let's go ahead and do that blend again, that blend edge. And 0.08 was our radius last time. So let's do like 0.06 now. Because remember, we can't do 0.08 on top of 0.08. We could have done 0.08 at the same time, but we can't do 0.08 and then put another 0.08 on top of it. It won't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag select these edges. And then I'm going to command select the bottoms here because I don't want to do those. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be inside the model, but I'm trying not to be like massively lazy. I mean efficient. Let's let it run. That's too big. See how it's still failing? So let's do set all. Let's do like 0.04. Plus, I think that was too big anyway. So I'm going to do 0.02 because I just want a little teeny radius on there. There we go. That's better. See, it's not a failure. It's just Rhino saying, that was a bad design choice. Think about that a little longer. All right, so there's our buttons. And we may want a little bezel or something. These actually look a little wide to me. So I'm going to just drag select all these guys. I'm going to just gumball them just a little thinner like that. Maybe I'm going to tuck them back just a little bit farther from the edge there. Now, do we want a bezel or something for them to lay down inside? I think probably that's not a terrible idea. So let's do that. I'm going to do that with a rounded rectangle. And we're going to start out here. And I'm not, I'm not even worrying about whether this is centered or not. I just want to get like the proportions and the, and the radius for that. And then I will use gumball to snap it to a center. Oops. And just use the midpoint of this model somewhere. Midpoint, see that? So it allows you to kind of like just move quickly and not really sweat the details so much because you can always use Gumball to recover what you need. This guy's down here, so I'm just going to slide it up. And let's go to shaded mode so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to sell curves, and I'm going to command click this one. And I'm going to just delete the other ones. I usually throw them on a layer if I'm doing a client job, <clears throat> but... I'm trying to move quickly here, so. All right, so I'm going to just use this gumball extruder, and I'm going to just shove this way down in the model. I don't even care how far it goes, and I'm going to cap it. And then I'm going to do two Booleans. I'm going to Boolean difference this using this, and I'm not going to delete the inputs. And what that's going to do is that's going to cut the bottom of this off so that it matches, right? Because I don't want a square-bottomed, you know, button bezel. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to tuck it down. Nah, I'm not even going to put. I'm not going to put. I'm not even going to put a, a number on it. I'm just going to tuck it down visually so that I'm happy with how far in it is. We'll worry about the details later. Then I'm going to not union. I'm going to boolean difference again. I'm going to subtract from this now 
using this and I am going to delete the input and that's going to make my little bezel. And we can blend off that edge. Maybe we'll go ahead and do that. Something really tiny. I usually save my fillets for the end, but I it's, it's kind of like this is a fairly non involved model so I can get away with doing this stuff kind of on the way but I would typically recommend that you don't do your fillets until you get done uh, what does boolean difference do exactly um, think about like a cookie cutter if you have a piece of dough and you stick the cookie cutter in it cuts it and then pulls out that chunk so booleans you can either um, take two models and combine them or take two models and um, use one to cut a hole in the other or you can take two models and stick them together and then create uh, the difference between the two. So that's a, a useful thing. So it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a trimming joining type of thing, okay? All right, so there's our buttons. Let's talk about, let's talk about this handle. How are we doing on time? Oh, half hour, we're doing great. So, this has got simple buttons on the side, so let's just go ahead and make those. I'm going to just make them in the front view. I'm not even going to worry about what location they're at. I'm going to do no constraint. So I'm just going to make it the right size. And then I'm going to use the shift key, and I'm going to take it out here like this, and then I'm going to gumball it in. Something like that. Go to the top view. And I'm going to have it just be right in line with the button. So I'm going to use the midpoint on the button, and that lines up. I'm going to blend off this edge. And I want it to be a little bit bigger. So let's do 0.08. That feels about right. And then. I'm going to stick this in the model about that far. Mirror it around zero. Told you I was getting to the mirror command. And then I need to talk about like, how does this handle work? <clears throat> is the handle exterior to this thing? Is it, is it sit out here in this space? Or is it interior, meaning that it's going to have to have a slot so that it that it goes back in space so that when it's flat it you know or when it folds or whatever you want to do and roll around i think the simplest thing to do is to make this exterior so <clears throat> my sketch kind of shows it in line here but in order for this handle to roll all the way flat in the back that would mean that there's going to be like a weird pie cut shape in the side of this thing I don't know, and I think as I'm looking at it, I don't like that. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call an audible and make this, uh, make this go exterior. So I'm gonna start by snapping to the end of that, so I know that it's in good shape there. And I'm gonna come up, and there's three points for a corner. I've said that twice now, but I want to make sure that everybody understands what I mean. When I say that, and I'm going to snap this to a midpoint. So when I say three points make a corner, right? What we don't want to do, especially folks who are who are new to this, this is not how you make a corner in Rhino. Don't do that. And the reason you don't want to do that is if I put a curvature comb on this thing, you're going to see, let's make this black so we can see it that's what that curve looks like okay this is the amplitude of what's going on so every time this curve thing this curve comb is going up and down that's an inflection or a dent in your curve meaning if you make a surface on that it's going to be a surface that rhymes with smitty okay we don't want to do that we don't want to make those kind of surfaces we want surfaces that look really good so let's let's do three point corner we're going to lead in one two, three, and then lead out. Now if I put a curvature comb on this, look at how nice and smooth that is. Okay? Now, not only do you need less points, but you're going to end up with a better surface anyways by doing that. Okay? Now, if we need to tighten the corner up, all you need to do 
is move these points closer together. If you need to make the corner softer, you just move them farther apart. So even when you get into complex things like this, right? We look at the points and start counting. We've got a lead in, one, two, three. That's this corner, right? And then this corner goes right in. So I can steal this point, and that's this corner, right? Now, if I need to control these points independently, if I need to control this corner and this corner independently, then I'd need one more point, right? But if I don't, I can actually get rid of this point. And now this corner is one, two, three. This corner is one, two, three. So if you think about it, that's the minimum amount you need in, in, you need in order to be able to do a transition like that. Now, um, we can start talking deep, more deeply about this as far as like when do you need to add a point or when do you not need to add a point, all that kind of stuff. But I think that's probably a discussion for another day. But so for right now, what I want you to remember is this kind of rule of three and and that is three points make a corner, right? Not seven, not 18, not 24, three. All right, so in this case, I missed my shape a little bit, so I'm gonna turn the points back on, and because I only use three points, it's super easy to do. I just pull this one down a little bit. I pull this one down a little bit. And I think, I think this is a more accurate representation of the shape that I want as opposed to my sketch, which looks like it bends out a little bit. I don't like that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And then we're gonna mirror this. And join. And then I'm going to copy. And everybody always asks me why I copy instead of offset. And I'll show you. So copy, the points look like this, right? If I were to offset, offset typically makes, I'm gonna offset it in so you can see what the difference is. Offset typically makes, oops, I didn't wanna join it. Don't wanna cap. Offset typically makes a lot more points. See that? See how it did exactly what I told you not to do? That's why I typically do copy instead of offset. Now, I will offset something so that I can get the shape because that is a numerically perfect offset. But geometrically speaking, those curves are a lot uglier. And so what I'll do is I'll offset lock that curve and then I'll copy paste and I'll pull the light curve into the shape of the offset and then I'll actually delete the offset. So I actually only use delete, I only use offset as a guide unless I absolutely have to. Now, the, the downside of doing that copy paste is you'll notice that this is, this is about right, this is about right, but see how we faded a bit in this corner here? See how it got a little wide? So I'm just gonna do a simple adjustment and get it a little closer to what I wanted. Like that, okay? So now it's nice and light. It's, it's doing what it needs to do. I'm actually gonna explode it because I changed the points on one side. And then mirror this back over. And it looks like it didn't update the points on the other side. So I'm going to join this one, hide it for now. And then I'm going to just make myself a little cutter from zero. I'm going to trim this off and mirror this again. And that way I know everything is all cool. 
All right. Isolate so that I can deal with just these guys. I'm going to close this up. Trim off the edge. Mirror that over around zero. See how fast we can go? I didn't like the command line when I first started using Rhino because I came from um, another software. I was going to say its name, but I decided not to. Um, I came from another software that had a it, that had a much different interface, and um, and I didn't like the command line um, when I started using Rhino. Um, I realized really quickly that the command line was actually like an insanely fast way of modeling. Um, it's a little counterintuitive when you start first start thinking about it, but it actually is pretty incredibly quick. Um, you don't have to go looking for menus or anything. If you know what the command name is, and I've got 20 years of memorizing command names, you can just start typing Rhino fills in the rest. You hit enter and you're done. So, um, so I closed that up. I made a planar surface. I'm going to just take this planar surface and extrude it. Bring everything back. And I actually extruded it fairly closely to what I wanted. I'm going to relocate my gumball to the midpoint of this guy. And then I'm going to drag it and snap it to the quadrant of that guy so I know it's centered. And I'm going to let that roll. And maybe we blend, maybe we blend the edges of this thing off. What do you think? Do we like that little corner sticking out? Is that kind of 50s retro or is that just sloppy? I think that's kind of sloppy, so I'm going to knock those off. We're kind of in the, doesn't feel like it, but we're kind of in the home stretch here because once we've got this done, we all we have to do is do the the front details and the handle, and that's actually going to go really quickly. So um, let's do, I don't know, 0.25. Let's see. Mm, maybe a little. Oh, it didn't accept my 0.25, so let's do that. Let's try that again. There we go. I actually like that better. It's kind of dipping in right at the center point, which feels correct to me. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to leave this just as like a, like a piece of sheet metal or a piece of metal. And so um, at the very least, it's going to have a teeny, teeny, tiny little fill it on the edge, but maybe we'll even do a chamfer. Maybe we'll do something crazy and chamfer it. Um, I typically don't leave sharp edges on a model. Um, the reason for that is there typically is not such a thing as a sharp edge in real life. So what I typically do is I will either put an itty bitty teeny tiny fillet on something, or I'll put a I'll put an itty bitty chamfer on it. And that actually is a little bit big. So I'm going to do previous edge selection. Let's do 0 0.02. Helps if I actually do it right. Previous edge selection. Set all. There we go. I like that better. So let's do it again on the bottom. And it should remember. Oh, helps if I pick the right tool. Duh. You guys are like, wow, this is definitely not practiced. Yes, no, it's not. I thought I was kidding. There we go. All right, progress. 
Cell curve, I'm gonna delete them. I usually put them on a, put them on a layer. I mentioned that already, but so let's talk about the let's talk about the handle here. Now the handle, there's a couple of ways that we could do this. We could actually just build it, right? We could design this curve, you know, to do this. Um, we could start with a primitive and point edit it, which I feel like is probably the way to go. Um, so let's do that. Let's let's do that. So let's start with a curve, and let's be lazy and and nah, let's not be lazy. I was going to say we could be lazy and duplicate a curve, but I'm gonna I'm gonna draw one because I want it to be a little lighter. How's this going so far? Everybody still with me? Have I lost anybody? So I'm going to overbuild this a little bit. And then I'm going to mirror this. And then I want to turn the points on because I want to make sure that these three points are lined up. And in this case, it looks like they are because there's no scale handle. If they weren't lined up, you'd see this. See the scale handle right there? So as long as there's no scale handle, we know those are lined up, which means they're tangent, which is what we wanted. So I've got this curve. And so what I want to do is I'm going to, let's see, what's the best way to do this? I'm going to extrude this guy. And then I'm going to copy paste that and it looks like looks like I've drawn my handle it's a little thinner in the middle see that versus the ends I may I may do that I'm gonna just scale it just a little bit from the center that'll bend it a bit that gives us that feel now I don't have enough points to do what I need to do here so I'm gonna rebuild this surface and I'm going to add, let's see, I only, I don't need any points in this direction. So I'm going to leave this at two. And I do probably need some more here. So I'm going to go like 30 here, just randomly guessing that that'll get me what I need. And when I turn the points on for this, that gives me enough information that I can start doing this. And it actually is pretty close to my sketch. My sketch wasn't super accurate, so I'm not gonna sweat it that bad. And I can pull this up like that. Oops, I grabbed two here. I didn't want that. Let's start over. So here. Make sure and grab every other one instead of the two side by side, which I did before. All right, I think that's probably, that'll probably get us there. Pull this up. Pull the entire thing back down now so that it's in approximately the right shape, right size. And you can see that I'm not gonna be symmetrical here. Um, so I have to decide like, what I want to do about that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to relocate my gumball to this point, and I'm going to slide this over so that it's in the center. And ideally, it would be good if I had something to snap to. So I'm going to just put a point at zero, move this up. And then what I can do is grab this entire thing and slide over and use gumball to locate it. So that way I know that this that this entire thing is is going to be symmetrical because I I skipped every other one. And so I'm going to trim this in the middle. And then mirror. And turn the points on. Oh, it's a poly surface. Not a curve. It's a poly surface. All right, so that gives us our handle. And now, so I've got my top and my bottom. 
how do I connect these guys? Well, I'm going to just, let's, let's make sure that they're about the same length and they're not. So let's do this. I kind of want it to follow the shape of that handle. Here. So this thing, this curve is on both sides. So I'm going to trim this off. Back to my perspective view. And let's do a blend surface. I'm going to just blend the front and the back of this. And oops, helps if I get the entire thing. Blend surface, chain edges. There we go. And I want this to be the same height. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to lock these. And I'm going to pull this all the way back to the left. And that gives me a nice kind of transition. I'm going to do the same thing again on the back. Chain the edges because this guy because we mirrored it remember so we have we've got two surfaces there and one on the top. Same height lock all the way to the left. Say OK and join. Now let's bring our model back and see this is way too wide for this handle so I'm just going to gumball scale it like that. And I'm going to see if I can cap it. It may cap and it may not, and it did in this case, which is great, because that means then we can just come over here and blend edge. I'm going to chain these edges. And 0.2 is probably not big enough, but let's see, because we're previewing. That's not quite big enough. So let's go, let's go 0.08 and see if we can get away with that. I like that. That'll work. Do the other side. And that's our handle. All right, so we're, we're almost out of the woods here. So all we have to do is build this last little detail. And that is actually going to go really quickly. So I'm going to hide everything else. Because the front is flat, I'm going to just go ahead and build this flat. And I'm going to start with a circle like that and then I'm going to start with copy paste and bring this in I'm going to make a single planar surface here And I'm going to be able to build everything else I need to build off of this pretty much using Gumball. So I'm going to take this curve, copy paste, Gumball this in, copy paste, scale that in. I'm going to make a planar surface out of these. Actually, I'm going to, let's see, what do I want to do? I'm, I'm sensing that there's a little bit of like, form change here. So I'm going to loft these because I want to be able to adjust this with sub-object selection at a later date. So I'm going to go ahead and loft that because what I can't do is I can't, I can't, um, I can't do this to a planar surface. Oop, didn't have history on. Ooh, let's try that again. It's going to be so impressive. Wah, wah. All right, so let's lock these two again. So now I can start playing with this because I have history on. I usually run with history off, by the way, just because it, um, it can be a little invasive sometimes. And so I have a little bit of shape like that. So I wanted a little bit of form change in there. Um, and I wanted a little step down in here, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do that with a planar surface. And then I'm going to just use Gumball to get what I need. And then I'm actually going to grab that surface and I'm going to extrude it. 
and then I'm going to sub object select the front and delete it. And that gives me my little instep there. All right, and then it looks to me like there's probably, so we've got this one, we've got the little instep, we've got the, the return, it looks like it steps down again. So I'm gonna grab this curve, I'm gonna extrude it back a little bit. That might be a little bit much, so I'm gonna sub object select and bring it back. It's probably too far. And then we've got probably a secondary little step in here. So I'm gonna shift command click. I'm gonna start dragging, hold down shift, and then I'm gonna tap alt. You see that little plus that shows up? That allows me to copy that curve. I'm gonna do a planar surface. Then I'm gonna grab that curve again, and I'm going to copy paste, shift drag, Let's go to the front view, make sure that we're somewhere close to what we wanted to be. Like that. I'm seeing this probably is also a little positive. So let's lock those two again. We're like three parts from being done here. So that. And then. I'm seeing this is also a little instep in there. So I'm going to drag this back. Shift command click for that corner or for that, that edge. Shift tap alt to make a copy. Planar surface. See how much detail we're getting out of like so few tools. Copy paste. Scale this in. I think this is going to be fairly positive now. Locked one more time. And then I think I'm going to just call the front of this thing a planar surface. Join all this up. And I'm going to shut history off because, like I said, it can be a little invasive sometimes. And then, so that's kind of our dial. Um, this curve on the edge, I'm going to extrude this back. Join, cap, that's our chunk, right? So let's bring the radio back and then let's get this where it needs to be. Let's do it right about there. I'm gonna Boolean these together. Might be a little premature to do this, but I'm gonna just go roll with it anyways. Pretty confident we can get where we need to get. And then let's do the dial indicator. And that is going to be a fairly planar shape. So let's go ahead and draw that out. I'm going to snap it to the center of this. And let's draw a vertical line from the center here that defines kind of where that thing is going to be. And then let's draw this curve. I think I overshot that a little bit. Yeah, let's turn the points on. I'm going to bring this guy back in line and just snap him to there. Mirror. Grab these guys, mirror again around the center. And I want all of these curves to be combined. So I'm going to use a command called curve boolean, which is a great tool 
I want to combine the regions and, and delete all the input. I'm going to just click out here and you can see that it takes all of the exterior traces around the outside and then combines them into one piece, which I love that. All right, so let's take a look at this guy by itself. See what we've got. Now, I think this piece is probably going to stick forward a little bit, so let's bring it out like that. And then this curve is probably going to come straight out like this. So I'm going to just draw that using gumball from the quadrant to intersect. And then I'm going to trim this curve with these guys. I'm going to change degree on those guys. And then I'm going to pull this point, this point, and this point but not the end. From there to there. And that gives me the basic layout of what I'm gonna do here. So now I'm gonna loft these things together. If you get stuck and you can't figure out what your model is supposed to do, just start laying out the curves. Just draw the thing in 3D space as a wireframe, wireframe and then just start knitting it together. Think about, think about building the model as like you would build it out of paper. Just gonna knit this up. Now, this curve and this curve, if I were to try and loft these together right now, it wouldn't work. So I'm going to split this. And the reason it wouldn't work is because this is a complete circle and this is a half circle. So I'm going to split this using the split tool. And I always get lost as to which one's which. But we're going to split it by a point. And I'm going to snap that here and there. And then I can loft these together. Join this whole thing up, cap, we go to shaded view. Oops, missed something down here. So let's fix that. Extract these guys. And let's figure out why. Yeah, little segment down there. Let's try again. Got to get the entire thing. There we go. Join that up. Now it didn't cap the back, so let's see if it will. And it did in that case. So then I'm going to take Shift Command click and I'm going to extrude the back just a little bit, make it a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to stick it in there. Now, the idea behind this thing is it's supposed to be spinner, but for this particular model, I'm not going to worry about doing the, um, doing the, you know, doing the, the spinny parts of it. I'm just going to leave it as a visualization. All right. So the only thing left we have to do is the grill and the and the text. And let me check the let me check questions here. How is chamfer edge different than rounding an edge? A chamfer is a flat thing, whereas a round is round. It's like a circular a circular edge versus a, a like like shaving the edge off of the file. Um, can you use join instead of curve boolean? Um, no, completely different thing. And curve boolean is is incredibly powerful in the fact that let's say if I wanted to make a gear. And if I were to array this like that. Okay, now if I wanted to make a gear, I would have to go 
I would have to pick all these things and I'd have to go trim, 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 trim. I'd have to click 30 times in order to get this all. Actually, I'd have to click 60 times because I'd have to trim this and the center section. Curve Boolean, I grab everything. I say boop and it's done. Okay, so join wouldn't have done that. Join, uh, in fact, join wouldn't have even joined this because they're all just overlapping. So curve boolean is the is the magic bullet for that. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, we're in the home stretch. All we have to do is put our drill in here. So let's uh, let's hide everything. Command A, hide, and let's lay our let's lay our grill out. And I'm going to do that with a single curve like that. And then we're going to transform array linear. And let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 of them. So we'll do 12. And we're going to start from here. We're going to go down about there. And we're a little short of where I wanted to be, so I'm going to scale in one direction. I could add another one, but I think I'm just going to scale it instead. Let's see. Eh, actually, I might add another one because that feels it feels like it's a little bit too like the last one might need to go in there. Now, how do I how do I cheat and figure out my spacing? I'm going to copy two of them. I'm going to gumball relocate. And I'm going to stick it here. This is my cheat. And I'm going to drag this down, tap alt to make a copy, and I'm going to snap the top one to the bottom one, which means I have two stacked on top of each other, and I'm just going to delete that one. So that's the easiest way for me to get that stacking. So now I need to get my. I want to make sure that this is lined up correctly, so I want to I want to make sure and use this circle. So I'm going to duplicate the edge of this thing. How are we doing? Ten o'clock, almost done. So we're almost about, almost an hour. We're good. A little bit over an hour, but that's all right. So I'm going to duplicate an edge. Cell curve. Isolate, and then I'm going to take this curve and these guys and I'm going to invert the selection and then I'm going to delete everything else. I'm going to take this and trim all of those. And then we need to determine our exterior shape. So let's bring this model back and we kind of need to figure out like how the shape on this thing is going to roll. So if I pull an ISO curve from each one of these surfaces, I can kind of figure out where that wants to go. So let's do that again. I'm going to snap to the end of this guy. See, I'm using the surface. And then I can just mirror these. Cell curve, isolate, and then I can take these and trim these guys off. Trim. All right, I'm going to save this. And then let's try curve boolean again and see whether see what the deal is. Did we find a bug? So far so good. Oops, not that one. Oh, the anticipation. 
Is it gonna work? Is he gonna look like an idiot publicly again? No, we're good now. There we go. And I wanna delete all the inputs and say, okay. All right, there we go. See? Not so bad. Now, I'm gonna take all of this stuff and I'm just gonna go burp, and I'm gonna extrude it into blocks. And you can see that they're open because we extruded curves. <laughs> I know, right? Curve Boolean, why are you like this? I was starting to like you. You know, honestly, I can I can honestly say that's the first time I've ever had that command crash. That's really, it was, uh, that's why I was like, ah! <laughs> I'm usually pretty unfazed when things go wrong, but that one caught me off guard. Uh, all right, so there's our grill. And if we do cell last, that gets our grill. Cell last is a cool command because it grabs the last thing you worked on. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. Now, these guys are awfully close to the edge here. I actually might want a little bit more breathing room. So I'm going to dupe the edge of this thing. And I think I want this to have a little bit of air around it. So I'm going to grab this. So I'll curve. And then... I'm going to do this, grab this guy, pull it out here. Um, by the way, uh, curve Boolean is, don't, don't, don't feel bad about curve Boolean, like don't worry about curve Boolean. It is really an awesome command, especially if you're doing text. Um, I, had a, I had a client that was doing automotive interiors and they were doing old, they were doing recreations of old um, car logos and stuff. And so they were tracing text forever. and they were trimming all that stuff by hand and I showed him curve Boolean and the guy just like put his head down on the desk and was like, you have no idea how much time you just saved me. This is just like going to save hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of trimming time. So it is actually a super useful command. So don't, don't, don't write it off over one bad experience. All right, so there's our grill work. We're gonna suck this into it. And because this thing is dead flat, we can actually get away with just poking it in as far as we want it to go in. So I'm gonna grab all these guys and I'm gonna just pull it back because I only want it in about that far. And then let's do a Boolean difference. From this, using this, And there's our grill. All right, the last thing that we need to do is just trace the logo. And it's probably the most boring part of the model. So um, I should have probably just designed these curves to start with, but let's just go for it. We're almost done, 17 minutes in. I might even do this just super quick. I don't know. Do you guys want to watch me do the logo or are we bored now? match so that this one matches that one. I want it to be positioned. So there's our R. My font design teacher from school is having chest pains right now, but I'm just going to move it quick. <clears throat> I may even move quicker and just trace the outline fairly crudely.
Yeah, this is gonna be ugly, but demo to sell. Do logos before a demo. You guys are all like, you said not to use so many points. <laughs> See what I say, not what I do. No, we're still actually if you're if you if you're watching closely, you'll notice that I am really only using three points for my corners. This could be a lot more accurate, but I'm trying to move quickly. You guys have been super patient. It matches my scruffy sketch, actually. This is, this font is. This font is a really cool font, but it would take more time than I'd like to spend on it to do this whole thing. So I'm just gonna hack it together. I could just copy the R from the other side, but see, so even we're moving quick, we're trying to do that rule of three, right? So what did you do this morning? Well, I sat and watched a guy click a mouse about 600 times. What did you do? Hmm. Can't be any worse than spending two hours on TikTok, right? Which is what you'd be doing anyways. You guys are like, no, actually there's a lot more interesting stuff on TikTok than this. <laughs> I get it, I get it. All right, you won't hurt my feelings much. I'm going to rush this, and then in the end, it's going to look terrible, and I'm going to be like, nah, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to steal this, though. Tap Alt. There we go. All right, let's grab that. We're gonna make a planar surface out of it. Uh, Self-intersecting curves were found. Yes, that's fine. So, trim that. Trim that. That self-intersecting thing, by the way, was just because I did this so sloppy, I probably had, um, I probably had some endpoints that were overlapping, but the planar surface tool is smart enough to realize that that's going on, and it actually used curve boolean, which we had just talked about, ironically, to solve that and give me the result. So that's kind of a nice, nice little boot there. So let's go here. Extrude this into a solid shape. Good shaded viewport. Bring it out. <clears throat> I'm going to save one more time, even though I don't have to because, because the Mac Rhino does actually do auto saving in the background. Um, it's just, I just have never gotten to the point where I can leave that. Um, all right, so I'm going to hide the image. <clears throat> And let's take a peek at what we did. Let's go to render view. Boop. That's our finished model. Should we throw some materials on it? Are you guys 
my, have I killed anybody yet? Are you, di are you dying? Or do you want to throw some materials on this? Let's do, I don't know, let's do a nice retro, like, kind of a creamy white. And then we'll do this in metal. That and that and these, and maybe it'll be just the handle. And this would be just the metal. No plastic, maybe like kind of orangey red. I don't know what was up with the 50s where they couldn't be like a really rich red. There were always these kind of weird orangey reds. Buttons, maybe buttons are not a tip. Right. And then maybe we do some sub object selection and say these things are metal. Shift command click, by the way, allows you to pick and assign things that are, are sub object selected. And then let's do one more that's just like a white white. And I'm going to shift command click both of these. And that gives us kind of a little different feel to the whole thing. I don't like that red. Let's change it. I think it feels like it should be more like a turquoise or something. And then that, I think, I think this should probably be this too. What do you think? How do we do? Then if we just run a render. On this machine, this is an old MacBook Pro, so this is going to take a while. But <laughs> the edge, somebody says, too old for TikTok. Good, me too. Um, all righty. OK, do the logo. Uh, is this typically the way you would do a font? Yes, but I would spend a lot more time on it. I would, I would really trace it out. I would trim for sharp edges. I usually would overdraw. You know, it's like the, 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 if it's a serif font, I would overdraw it and then trim the edges, um, you know, stuff like that. But for this, it kind of got us where we needed to get and, and went from there. So that's our, that's our model. So uh, hour 27 minutes. And we're into the rendering. Like I said, this is a pokey machine, so we're only at 28 samples right now. Um, that will res up to a thousand, so it could be here a while. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it done here. You're more than welcome to watch the noise clear up if you want on the render, or we can just call it a day and uh, and and go from here. So that's about about all I have to share with you. So if you have any other questions, now's the time to hit me with them. Um, any questions, comments, anything like that. We do this about once a month, so keep an eye out. Um, we also are on the, this is this is the YouTube page. This is where all this stuff is gonna land. Um, if you haven't been keeping an eye on this, you should keep an eye on this, Rhino3D, um, because this is where all the new stuff comes on. So I just posted some stuff on SubD. Um, this, is the, this is the other retro radio I did for the Windows stuff. Uh, when will it be posted? Hopefully by the end of the day, depending on how long it takes um, to uh, to rip the video. And again, on this machine, it's a little slow, but um, I'll try and get it done. It'll, it'll either be up later today or, or early tomorrow. Um, next time, will it be another topic? Yes. Uh, have any suggestions? Anything you want to see? We take requests. You only do product design. Um, as opposed to what? Like I'm not an uh, architecture or something like that. Yeah, I'm not an architect. And so that would be a little bit like watching me try to play piano, which I'm also not a piano player. Um, it may be entertaining. 
if we'd all been drinking, but it's probably not going to be useful. <laughs> so, so I probably wouldn't do architecture stuff. I'd have to find somebody who actually has some architectural experience in order to be able to do something that would be useful for architecture. There are a ton of architectural videos out there, by the way, um, if you do some Googling for uh, Rhino and architecture. I'm a car designer by training and have been doing product design and toy design um, most of my career. So um, I haven't done any architecture stuff. Uh, the screen you have up, how do you get there? It is right here. And if you subscribe, you'll get updates when new things come up. So please subscribe. All right, any other questions? If not, I will let you go. Let's see how our rendering's doing. Oh, we're 116 whole samples. By the way, there's a development for V7 that's coming out called Denoisers. And what Denoisers do is they actually have an AI powered algorithm that goes and evaluates all of these little, the sparkly, messy, noisy stuff here. And it will automatically smooth it out. So at three minutes and 53 seconds with the denoiser on, this rendering would be done. It would remove all the noise automatically and the thing would look amazing. So even at 132 samples, this rendering would look fantastic. All right, any other questions? If not, I'll let you go. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for sticking with me through that, that logo. I'll make a note to myself to have logos ready in the future. <laughs> but I try not to prepack, I try not to prepackage stuff because I feel like that kind of diminishes the experience a little bit so um, any other questions if not i'll let you go thank you very much i'm kyle houchins this is getting started rhino for mac see you next time